All right, give me one minute. Let me tell you a story. It's a life-changing story. It was life-changing for me. Very likely to be life-changing for you. By the way, I got LASIK, so I don't my glasses. It's kind of cool. First time since I was 17 that I haven't needed glasses to drive. Um, so the story. If you want to... Let me tell you who should listen to this story. If you don't want to do what other people do. If you don't want to have an average life, listen to this story. If you don't want to have an average life, listen to this story. Like Thoreau said, the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. What is called resignation is confirmed desperation. So most people in the world live in a life of confirmed desperation, okay? When I was 16, um, I realized life's basically impossible to live correctly. Everybody you meet, every adult you meet, life full of regrets. I don't care how old you are, people older than you look back at their life and say, I just want a do-over. But there's no do-overs in life. That's the problem. <laughs> they say life's like a parachute jump. You only have one chance. You mess up the chance, there is no second chances. You hit the ground and you fail. And most people, they say 80% of people don't like the three most important things in their life. Their career, how they grew up, and who they're married to or who they're attached to. Friends, family, the social circle's not right. Income's not right. Um, they don't like where they live. They don't like the routine. They don't like the nine to five grind, like all this stuff. So I was 16. I, I realized that I was a little bit ahead of the game. And I started thinking, I was like, how can I not be like everybody else? Everybody else I see has the same regrets. They hate their job. They don't make enough money. They feel isolated. They're depressed. They're not traveling enough. They're not happy. They're not free. And so what dawned upon me was, why don't I just ask all the people that have way more experience what the solution is? But I bumped into a problem with that because you can't ask people who didn't succeed how to succeed. Like if you want to know how to win at basketball or football, your best person to talk to is someone who won a championship. If you just ask the average person just because they're older doesn't mean they know anything. In fact, older can just mean cynical and in a way you know less because you're not open to new ideas. So my first test didn't work. I just started asking people all the solutions to life, like what I should do for my career, how should I make money? And um, I was more confused than ever. So then I bumped into this mentor a little bit later, this guy named Alan Nation. He said, no, Ty, the secret in life is to ignore 99 out of 100 people. But when you find the one person who actually knows what they're talking about, like actually listen. So I was like, ah, oh, that's that makes sense. So the real secret is knowing who to fully ignore and knowing who to fully listen to. And the crazy thing is you might have to ignore like someone close to you, like your parents. Just because you're born to your parents, that's just fate, randomness, you could say, in a way. It doesn't mean you were born to the wisest people that can give you the best answers, especially when it comes to making money. I'm like, I grew up, I remember, it's funny, in this story that I'm telling you, I the story continues all the way to my life now. Last month, I had a guy at my house named Tillman Fertitta. He's a billionaire. Um, he's worth $4.9 billion. The Forbes list just came out. He owns the Houston Rockets. He owns the uh, Golden Nugget Casinos. He owns 600 restaurants. And he has 60,000 employees. And I'm working on a big deal. I just bought a huge company. I bought a company that's doing $740 million in revenue. And um, I bought it after I talked to him. So last month I talked to him, this month I bought the company. And I asked him specific questions that only that guy could answer. The only person I know, I know a handful of billionaires, I know a handful of people, not just billionaires, but people who have like, they've pulled off what everybody wants in life. They've got like the trifecta, they've got everything, you know, they call it triple threat. These people have it. I'm not saying they're perfect. You could dissect anybody's life and find stupid stuff, but this guy, gave me insight that no college could give me, no university, no degree, none of my friends growing up, none of my family growing up. So I would think back, I'm 16 years old, I'm totally lost. I start asking everybody, that doesn't work. I meet a mentor, he says, be more selective in who you listen to, one out of 100 rule, I call it, the one out of 100 rule. And really I think the rule's more like one out of 100,000 or one out of a million. And this guy, Tillman Fertitta, this is just an example. Now, in my point in my life now, I know quite a few people like this. But there's not many of them in the world. And when I was young, the problem was I had access to nobody with answers. 
Nobody. And so I went through life and I stumbled here. And I'm looking back, all the things I'm doing now that I love about my life, not my life's not perfect, but all the things I do love, I could have done, I, I wasted 10 years. And I promise you this, if you're watching this, if you don't understand what I'm saying in this story, you will waste 10 years of your life. And you don't have to waste those 10 years. The only thing you can't get back is the years of your life. So you look at your life now, I promise you, you're behind, just like I was behind. And I'm still behind. But I now have a shortcut, a way of finding answers. So let's just say you hate your job. Let's just say you wanna make more money. I remember the first time I figured out how to make $100,000 a year before I was making zero. I literally had less than $100 in my bank account. And I started listening to some people. I listened to this guy named, um, named Corey Rudel. Never even met him, but I bought books and he had this course. And he's like, here's how you make $100,000. And within nine months, I went made $100,000. I learned to use Google Ads, generate leads. I was working for GE Capital back then. And um, it worked. Like everybody else, I was looking around me going, what's going on? And I realized they weren't being selective in who they listened to. They were just listening to their mom, their dad, their uncle, their friend, their friend of friend. They were reading the magazine or newspaper. Oh, getting a little bit from Twitter and all that. Forget that. I became a hyper-focused listener. I became selective in who I listened to. At that point in my life, I just listened to Corey Rudel. I said, yo, let me just follow what this guy says. Let me not listen to 38,000 people and get all confused. One person. And I remember I paid like 500 bucks and I got this three-ring binder in the mails when I was living in Raleigh, North Carolina. Get this three-ring binder. I start reading it. I was living in a mobile home at the time, believe it or not. Basically homeless because I didn't have a bed I was sleeping on the couch. I couldn't afford rent before I got this core Rudel thing and I had um, slowly saved up a little bit of money. I had this little job, saved up like 500 bucks, bought this guy's training and he trained me and it worked. Sadly, Corey Rudel, I never got to think of him in person. He died in a car accident in 2008. Um, he made so much money, he had all these Lambos and Porsches and he crashed his Porsche and, into a cliff actually in La Jolla, California. Sad story, but he changed a lot of lives, including my life, and that's his legacy, and that's, most people don't even leave a legacy, so. Um, but that wasn't, like, so then I knew how to make 100 grand, but then I was like, man, life has more. I don't wanna live an average life. I wanna be growing. I wanna be doing new things, and so nightclub business. I was like, I wanna get in the nightclub business, but once again, who do I listen to? Do I ask my friends? I didn't know. I grew up with a family, never met a millionaire. First time I met a millionaire. I never met a billionaire obviously growing up, never met a millionaire. I remember when I was uh, about 18, 17, 18 years old, I was still at home, our church, I went to a church called Covenant Church in Raleigh, North Carolina, my parents went to, and these people, the Parasos, they made a million dollars in our whole family and the whole church, And because I grew up like middle class when I was younger, like lower middle class or even more on the poor side, um, but my mom got remarried, my stepdad made was worked at the post office, Made 50,000 a year, so all of a sudden we're moving up. And, and then I, we met this family, the Parasos, that were millionaires. And I remember, but I, but I was still like 17, so I never really learned anything from them. That was the first time I ever met a millionaire. Um, who, and I got a little advice from them, believe it or not, but not much. Because I hadn't really absorbed this way of selectively listening to people. So I then get a little bit older, start meeting sharp people, smart people, people who have the answer. Corey Rudel is one of them. Then I meet this guy, Giorgio Batoxias. He owns restaurants and nightclubs in Raleigh and Durham, North Carolina. So I went to him and I was like, hey, and he had this partner, Jay, Giorgio and Jay. I said, well, you guys teach me. And they started teaching. I remember the first thing you taught me about a nightclub. Keep it, like, it, don't make it uh, too big of a nightclub where it looks empty. They're like, close the doors, shut some walls off, make the thing feel like people are like, people like to feel like they're in a they're in a packed place. You don't want a two pack where it's like fire hazard, but that little tip, you'd be surprised how many people don't know that. I started learning selectively. I didn't ask anybody. I didn't ask my friends, my mom, nobody. I just selectively listened to a mentor. That's the whole point of the story, by the way. And then I created two sources of income. I had. It's making six figures here and six figures here.
was like, put those two together. I was like, wow, I'm making more money than anybody in my family. My dad's from Harlem. You know, his dad worked in a subway. I'm not from multi-generations of wealth. I'm not from the Rockefellers, the Rothschild, J.P. Morgan, none of that, you know. And so my dad was in prison when I was born. Nothing. But by selectively learning, I, boom, I begin to skyrocket financially and just in life, freedom and happiness past my friends, past people I went to high school, past people that I didn't go to college, but past people who went to college and I didn't go to college. And all of a sudden I'm going, man, there's something to this. And I follow that selective listening to the right people my whole life. But now I raise the ante. Like I said, last month I'm meeting, you know, those of you who watch my videos, you see Mark Cuban, you see people, Steve Ballmer, you know, Steve Ballmer's now worth $52 billion. I had dinner with them. Uh, not too long ago, I had a long conversation about the direction of my life and business. This is a guy who's $52,000 million. He's worth listening to. Each conversation like that shapes and molds and changes my life. And so what I'm trying to say to you is, if you don't have that in your life, forget what anyone tells you. A lot of people that don't know what they're talking about say, no, you can just learn, just learn by doing. Well, yeah, you do learn by doing. That's true, but... So like if you want to learn to play basketball, you learn by actually playing basketball. Yeah, but every basketball player in history had coaches they listened to. Everyone, Michael Jordan, LeBron James. I, I've become friends with quite a few. Chris Paul's a good buddy of mine. He uh, has had coaches his whole life. You know? I was just at a Laker game. Aunt, I know Ant Davis, Anthony Davis. He's had coaches his whole life. So yeah, you learn by doing combined with being coached by people who know what they're talking about. You don't just go, nobody just goes and plays any sport. But when it comes to life, nobody follows that rule. That's why people's life suck. People are awesome at sports, but most people's life suck for one simple reason. Who are you listening to? Who are you listening to? And so if you could begin to do what Alan Nation said, is the secret to life is to ignore 99 out of 100 people. But when you find that one person who knows what they're talking about, do everything they say, your life will transform. It'll transform this week, this month, this year, and over the, the whole course of your life, however long you're here on planet Earth. I guarantee that. As long as you're listening, adapting, and, and becoming a learning machine. Now, let me just say, I'm not guarantee you're going to be a millionaire overnight because most people you listen to that are smart, they'll tell you that's probably not going to happen. It happens fast for some people, but in general, you got to put a little work, a little time. But what I'm saying is you can transform your life, the direction of your life. You're trying to go north. Right now, you're going south. You can flip that compass, that direction north almost overnight. You don't always see it fill up your bank account right away. You don't always see your life go from a drudgery, nine to five, you know, drudgery to excitement overnight, but the direction can change faster than you can imagine. In fact, many ways, the direction of your life changes in a blink of an eye when you make the decision to change your course. So I guess what I'm saying is I got lucky for some reason at 16, this thought came into my life that I need to figure out how to not just learn through trial and error. It's like Warren Buffett says, you only learn through mistakes, but there's no rule it ha they have to be your own mistakes. Meaning, just learn from other people's mistakes. You know, Tilma Fertitta. I was getting ready to buy a big company. This company did $69 million a month. I own it now. Well, I talked to him first. You can see I did an interview, a public one, but I had a private conversation with her two offline and I'm like, hey, you know, how do you buy? Because this is a guy who buys companies. Like he bought the Houston Rockets for $2.2 billion. He's qualified. So you need to be selective. You need to find who's qualified. And then you need to adapt. That's the three things that can change your life. Be very selective. Know who's qualified. So you have to know who's qualified. Because a lot of people try to BS you and say, oh, yeah, I'm qualified. Blah, blah, blah. I got an MBA. Blah, blah. No, that's not what makes you qualified. You're qualified for what you've done. You know? Like, if you want to know how to lift heavy weights, you need to find somebody who can bench press 500 pounds. They're qualified. You can see it with your own eyes. It's like Ronald Reagan said, trust but verify. Oh, I trust you're an expert. Let me see you bench press. Okay, you bench press 500 pounds. You probably know a little bit about lifting weights. You want to make a million dollars? Okay. Let me see how you made a million dollars. By the way, if people can't show it, it's probably not true. Tillman Fertitta is on the Forbes list. You can see. 
You can usually tell what people have by looking at their life. It's not, sometimes people fake it and they say fake it till you make it and a little bit of that. But in general, watch people for a year or two or three and the truth comes out about where they are, especially financially. So now here's why I'm saying all this. A lot of people, I've got over 10 million social media followers. Every single day, I got bombarded with DMs and messages and Facebook Messenger and snaps and all this. And they all say the same thing. Hey, lay out, what's the secret? You know, what's the number one way to make more money? What's the number one way to make And I'm like, listen, I came up with this thought about a year ago. But I haven't really uh, shared it much because I've been so busy in the last year. I'm going to take you from a white to black belt. I do jujitsu. So you got belts in jujitsu, right? You got white belt, blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, black belt, and then you can go coral belt and red belt, okay? You got all these different belts. So what if I could make you a black belt in what I call the four pillars of the good life? Health, wealth, love, happiness. You got to have all four. You can't just be wealthy and miserable. You can't be just wealthy and so out of shape you die. You, you, like, you got to have the whole package. So I did a little test group. And some of you have seen it. It's called Five Minute Mentor. Give me five minutes a day. Transfer your life. I'm going to share a five minute nugget every single day for a year. Take you from white belt. Each month you get a new belt. I just like the belt thing because it kind of makes you understand that there's a goal. And you hit the goal and then you go to the next goal. Goal setting. I'm going to teach you everything that I've learned from mentors. Every little bit. And these are people you'll never get access to most likely. Or if you do, it'll take you a long time to get access. It took me a long time to get access to these people. So I'm going to give you something. You won't hear this at Harvard. You won't hear this in any book. You won't hear this at any conference. I'm going to open up behind the scenes in little five-minute chunks every day something to you. Okay? On health, wealth, love, happiness. Everything I've learned. Not that I'm the perfect expert on all of them. So some of what I'm teaching you in these five-minute daily mentor lessons is what I've learned through my, my from myself but a lot of it is what I've learned from other people and I want to just make it so easy for you to get access this is going to and I'm going to price it basically so low like around Netflix price maybe a little couple bucks more than Netflix you know so it's like 50 cents a day or something like that um somewhere around that and here's the thing I'm gonna make a test group and I've never done this. This will be my first test group. Just like I did my 67 steps, my social media marketing. This is the first test group for my five-minute mentor. What I'm going to do, you're going to become a founding member. You're going to get two years. Because I'm. Gonna, this is a yearly program. But you focus on one year at a time. Month by month. Day by day. Month by month. Then you finish a year. Then you can kind of go. That's the black belt. Then the second year is the work on getting your red belt. Which is like super advanced stuff. And um, so you're going to get two years. I'm going to put a link below. You click and you get two years. And then you're also going to get, and this is something I've never done, over the next, the first 60 days that you click and get in this test group, this five-minute mentor test group, I'm going to actually get on live calls with you each week. Either me or my mentors will be on these calls, my business partners. And I'm going to actually walk you through the first 60 days. Anybody else who's ever gone in this in the past I did a little I released it a little bit a few of the lessons they didn't get any of that they didn't get two years they did not get um uh live calls we're gonna do zoom calls you just go on your phone and I'll be there I can answer questions it'll be in a group setting my goal is to take 300 people massive you know the movie 300 300 people changed the world in history Give me 300 people that, that have been trained in everything they should have taught you in school. And I want to talk about for a second what you're actually going to learn. I wrote out a whole list, just an example of what you're going to learn. So you have only three days left before I close this. 